I get asked about paper cutter sharpening quite a bit. I've said yes also quite a bit. Uh, and I've grown to kind of be wary of them and kind of say, maybe if... Uh, so in this video, I want to show you a paper cutter that I would say yes to and I did say yes to and that I sharpened. And there are some features about it that I like, sort of. I'm still not real hot on paper cutter sharpening. Um, just because it's kind of a lot of commitment in time. They're not a great return. Uh, they're kind of finicky. There's a lot of different ways that they're built. Uh, but I did say yes to this one. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, what I like about it. Yo, what's up? My name is Matt and I own the American Edge, which is a knife and tool sharpening business in New Hampshire. And I'm also a host at the Guild of Professional Sharpeners, which is a community of people that are operating uh, knife and tool sharpening businesses. So uh, we're all over the world, pretty much mostly US, but um, looking, <laughs> could be anywhere. Uh, sharpening applies anywhere in the globe. I like to say that uh, pretty much every human since the beginning of time when humans started using tools uses cutting tools. So this is a uh, skill set that is applicable everywhere. Uh, but anyway, the Guild of Professional Sharpeners is a place where we convene and we talk about sharpening, uh, share skills. There's some courses there to help get you up to speed if you want to turn the sharpening thing, both learning about it and then uh, making money uh, from it. In my case, on the side, but it could be a full-time venture as well. So anyway, without further ado, let's go take a look at this paper cutter. Okay, I already sharpened this paper cutter, so we're not going to get to go through the whole process together. But some things that I look for... Uh, that would incentivize me to say yes to sharpening a paper cutter really boil down to the ability to remove the blade and the table guard without needing to disassemble uh, the whole thing, uh, but specifically the, the spring and arm mechanism here. This one, uh, the, the screws are all really easily accessible. Uh, on the blade on the guard here and then also on the blade these four screws are very easily accessible on some of them uh, That's not the case where there's either screws uh, buried or hidden under things So you need to take everything apart in order to get that off or Sometime I've seen some where the the blade is riveted onto the handle So if you want to work it you really need to take the whole thing apart, which is not it's not impossible it's just like when you you know, when you value your time and like people, you know, what do you think people want to pay to get a paper cutter sharpened? Um, taking all of this apart and then resetting it when, you, when you're done is just time consuming. And then you're monkeying with it, right? If you haven't done it, take my word for it. Um, it's, not like it it's not like rocket science. It's just, it's just kind of a nuisance. So I really like it when I can get access to all of this stuff without needing to take that apart. Okay, so then the process that I'm looking at for a paper cutter has evolved over time, but it, it is currently at, um, I'll just walk through it. Um, first off, take both of these off. Now they're in my hand, I'm good to go here. Uh, for the blade guard, uh, one th I didn't work the blade guard for, or the, the table guard here for a while. Uh, and I think I've decided that part of the sharpening process needs to be some work uh, on this this part of the table here. And I'll show you a picture for clarity in a minute. But essentially, I want a straight, I want to make sure that that is nice and straight. And I want just a little, not, like not 90 degrees, but just a few degrees off um, so that it's not square. And I, I do have an edge there, right here. There's an edge there, right? Like right now, it'll it'll shave my fingernail. It's not like a knife edge. It's not like I need to be con super concerned about cutting myself, but there is an edge there. Okay, so that's uh, step one. Uh, oh, and I'll tell you how I did that this time was uh, I have a Thorby now, and you can see it's uh, configured. Well, it's kind of hard to see here. I still have some stuff out on it, but uh, it's configured. So I mounted the, the table guard here. This is um, actually, it was upside down, the table guard. So that's at about three degrees relative to this. Uh, so that got my, it's um, the way this works. If you've never seen one is it's got a little motor that drives this back and forth. This wheel spins. So it's a nice straight edge. Uh, now, if you don't have one of those, I was thinking of some other ways you could do it. And one would be um, 
it doesn't, we don't need to go nuts here, right? Like you could mount it in a, in a vise and uh, take a hand file and, you know, just work your way down the edge uh, until you put up a little burr on this face. That's all you need to do, get a burr up on that face. And then with a wire wheel, uh, just knock the burr back down to the, the side and assemble the unit open so that on your first stroke, I use a piece of, um, I use a piece of uh, like a, a brown bag, paper bag, uh, like thick brown paper. And that's what I use for my first cut. And that's how we cut the burr off from the inside there. Um, okay, so that was a, like a long version of step one. Step one is to get that stuff off. Uh, work the table edge here just to put, just so you get a nice edge, uh, preferably as straight as possible. Uh, because a lot of times you'll see that they are dinged up and um, I think that is has been reason in the past why maybe I haven't got great results when I've done these. Okay, so now with the actual blade off, um, this is another one where uh, I'll show you a picture in a minute, but um, I, I've done some of these at a steeper angle and it comes out worse. So I think this, I think these come out, these work better when they are at about, you know, if this is zero, they're this about like a 10 degree, right? I have got some that were like up towards 20. And, uh, and that, in that case, um, first off, it's really sharp to the touch. So there's that danger issue, uh, but also the blade chipped really easy. And it could, it was one time, like it was, could have been a function of the blade, but most of them are not a very steep angle on this. Um, and I do that by hand on the one by 30 uh, starting at 120 grit just to put up a burr. So I'll be grinding, uh, again, kind of flipped so that I'll be grinding this way. So event, uh, what I'm looking for is a burr coming up on this face along the whole blade, right? And then I'll knock that burr back with a wire wheel on my belt sander, <laughs> belt sander, I'm sorry, bench grinder, wire wheel on my bench grinder knock that burr back and then uh, just refine it. I, I actually left this one at 120 kind of as a as an experiment but uh, and it's it's plenty sharp again that shaves my fingernail. I don't know if you can see that or not but the uh, trust me it does. Um, but you could I would I don't think if I'm thinking kind of scissors like I'm not sure I take that past 400 grit. Um, so but anyway same sort of thing there just uh, grind it, put up a burr along the whole length, knock the burr back, uh, maybe refine it up to 400 and then leave the burr on this face when you assemble. So again, assemble the, the mechanism open and on that first closing, um, have a piece of like thick paper in here and kind of monitor the tension between here and here as you're coming down so that because you're cutting the burr off of both faces uh, just like you would if you were sharpening a pair of scissors. Uh, and then once you get the burr off, then it's smooth going. Maybe just check the work again, feeling if you nicks or burrs, and um, that's it. Um, yeah, actually, that's it. Okay, hopefully this is more clarifying just to uh, uh, what I'm referring to for the angle. So this is the one that's on the table, uh, right? And this is the blade that comes down on it. So this angle, I just don't want it to be square. I just want a little bit of angle on it. So that, and I said three degrees. Um, if you're doing it by hand, just like, you know, not square, but not too steep either. Um, I guess, so I'd be, if I were doing this by hand or whatever, I'd be filing this way, putting up a burr, on this face up here, right? Like this a dramatic burr right here. And then I just wire wheel that back. So before, uh, when we reassemble, there's a little burr hanging down right here. And then that gets cut off. On this one, um, drawn a little steeper than, but for clarity, but anyway, uh, like a 10 degree angle. So this is the blade coming down. Um, uh, I've just, I feel like don't, you don't wanna make these too steep. Um, I think that's it. Again, uh, grinding, grinding in this way so that you know, during, while you're grinding, you're um, uh, putting up a little burr over here. Use a wire wheel to kick it back and then your final pass, just leave the burr on that side. 
so that when you bring it down, you're cutting off the burr here and you're cutting off the burr here using a, a decent sized piece of paper to uh, um, remove that burr. Thank you. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If you have or if you have anything to add, please let me know in the comments. I'm always looking to learn and to get better, and I certainly don't know everything there is to know about paper cutters. Uh, also, just real quickly, the market for these, um, there's probably several in your town, like schools primarily, maybe the churches. Um, once the word of a sharpening business gets out, it is uh, pretty common for people with paper cutters to reach out and ask about it. Uh, and it also could be a way to communicate that you're building a business by getting in touch with anybody in a school, um, art rooms, any sort of thing like that. So there's a lot of them out there and there is potential for this. Um, and uh, I think that's it. If you'd like to uh, learn more again, check out guildofsharpeners.org and um, reach out to me in any time. Thanks. Okay, slicing a single sheet of paper isn't, you know, doesn't really say much. So I actually sliced that whole sheet into 13 here. So just gonna see what happens. All right, 13, 13 is 26. That, that one put up a little bit of resistance. Oh, that's probably as far as we want to go. But whatever, it works.